Another question we had was, do you mean daydreaming when you talk about imagining more than we should? No, not necessarily. Although daydreaming is kind of a, it's kind of a free flow association, I would say. Daydreaming is more like a, a stream of thought associ by association. One thought leads to another thought, to another thought, to another thought. Active daydreaming would be when you took some thought, some idea, and then you began to fantasize or imagine about that idea. Uh, people have a big problem with this whole idea of imagining more than we should. For us, imagination is not generally a positive thing. It's generally negative. And what makes it negative is not that there's anything wrong with imagining. What makes imagination negative is our goal of being in charge of our faculties. That ruins everything. That ruins all the fun in life. All the fun of just being a slob mentally. All the fun of just being a pig emotionally. You know what I mean? A pig who can't get enough of emotions. Who just gobbles them up and will eat any emotion that comes along. Anything will wallow in it. That's an emotional pig. And in this work, it's not good to be an emotional pig. Because you're asked right off the bat to start to distinguish between emotions that are useful to you and emotions that are useless based on emotions that save you energy or emotions that expend energy so that you can take that energy and use it for bettering your state of consciousness, bettering your inner state. So suddenly now, all the fun is taken out of life, all the delicious negative emotions that the pigs get to wallow in. They're, they're now out of bounds. No, you, we don't do that anymore. Why? Well, because we've made this goal not to partake of, not to wallow in, not to, not to gobble up every negative emotion that makes itself available to us. And in life, Negative emotions make themselves available to us all the time because almost every external event can trigger some kind of negative emotion. Even the negative emotions we call happy, exciting negative emotions. Boy, I really told her, didn't I? <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what. Did you see her face when I told her what a fat slob she was? I put her straight. And boy, I told her, right in front of her kids, too, you're setting a bad example for your kids, taking them to McDonald's like that and let them stuff themselves so that they'll look like you. Well, I showed her. See, that's a positive negative emotion. People feel all proud about that. Well, I, and then other people will gather around that person. Boy, I wish I had your guts. I wish I could do what you do. I don't. I don't admire that at all. I admire compassion. Compassion is not a negative emotion. So it's very difficult to say what compassion is because we don't know much about those emotions. We know lots and lots about the negative emotions. We can define those, can't we? But what about compassion? How do you define compassion? Uh, it's not pity. What is it? It's difficult for us because it's not something we taste very often. Not something we spend much time with. Daydreaming is a waste of time. It's a waste of time and energy. Imagination, negative imagination, the kind of imagination that we mostly have, is like trying to carry water in a sieve, where, where water is energy, is force. And you can't get it very far in a sieve because it all runs out. And so, for us, we want to seal up those leaks so that we can actually carry some energy from one place to another, so we can carry some force from one place to another, so that we can actually learn to do something in our lives. Not just talk about doing something, but actually do something. Actually become the master of maybe one little inner state. The inner state of, let's say, equanimity, where we have some kind of balance, where everything that happens in life doesn't knock us off guard, knock us this way or knock us that way. It's like we're on a tightrope, and it's very precarious. And if the wind blows too hard, we're, oh, we're going to fall that way. And if, the, and if somebody shakes it, then we might fall that way. We don't know which way we'll fall. That's not the way that people who are in the work wish to live their lives, 
Because people who have entered this work entered this work because they wanted something else. They didn't want to live life like that anymore. They got to the point where they said, I've had enough. I need something more stable. I need some foundation. I need some ground that's going to support me so that I can actually get something done, so I can get someplace, so I can do something, so I can be something, so I can be aware of something. There's so much more to life than what I'm experiencing. I just know there is. I don't know what it is, but I know there's something. And that's when people come to this work. Now, they don't all come to this work that way. Some people come to this work accidentally. They're fortunate. <laughs> their husband or their wife or somebody was in it, and it just rubbed off on them somehow. And they began to see, you know, there's some benefit in this. There's, there's, there's something important here. There's something of value here. And they began to value it for themselves, not just because their husband or wife or some family member or whomever, a friend, valued it, but because they began to see the value in it themselves. Those are fortunate people. There are very few people who can really enter into this work. It's a very narrow gate, and it's a very difficult road. But if you're one of the fortunate ones who can, be grateful, be grateful, because great gratefulness, gratitude, expands your consciousness.